All right, new sentence patterns. The first one we're going to look at is called independent clauses and compound sentences. So all of the sentence examples that we just did in the review are independent sentences. They're also called complete sentences. They stand alone. You can join two independent sentences together with a coordinating conjunction, and the coordinating conjunctions are and, or, nor, so, but, for, yet, exactly the same in English, um, to create what we call a compound sentence. Now, when the sentences are joined, the independent sentences are called independent clauses. We use this in English too, so if you've taken Mrs. Lorelli's classes or grammar classes, you're gonna know a lot about clauses. I'm, I say here, the zombies ate copious amounts of brains. The zombies are full. Two totally independent sentences, each of them are complete. I can add a comma and an and, and they become a compound sentences. The compound, excuse me, the zombies ate copious amounts of brains and the zombies are full. Pretty easy. So in Latin, like English, the conjunction comes in between the clauses. So look for the conjunction because that will allow you to break down a longer compound sentence into two shorter independent clauses and the sentence will be much easier to translate. So each of them, remember, has a subject and a verb, makes complete sense. You could break it apart, take out, take out the coordinating conjunction and it makes complete sense. Okay, so in order to write less, Romans often wrote the verb only once for both clauses. So if you don't see the verb in one clause, look at the other clause in the sentence. We do the exact same thing. It will probably be there. The zombies like cow brains, but not chicken brains. So if we took out the but and just said not chicken brains, you'd say, oh, that's not, that's, not, that's a dependent clause because that doesn't make sense itself. But no, you really could say the zombies like cow brains but the zombies don't like chicken brains. And it's just longer, so we naturally shorten it, and they do too, so the verb, the verb belongs, the verb belongs both places. Okay, let's talk about dependent clause. So a dependent clause, and if you've taken any sort of um, English grammar, you might recognize this, it's also called a subordinate clause is one that cannot stand alone because it does not express a complete thought. Like all clauses, a dependent clause has a subject and a verb. Just because it has a subject and a verb doesn't mean it expresses a complete thought. So a dependent clause needs an independent clause in order to express a complete thought. So subordinating conjunctions or dependent clause, the, the subordinating conjunctions will connect a dependent clause to an independent clause. So identifying the conjunction will help you find the clause, which can be anywhere in the sentence. All right, so let's take a look. You tell me where the dependent clauses are. The zombie slept after they ate. So it may help you to identify the complete one. Can you see the complete one? The zombie slept. So the dependent clause is after they ate. So here we go. Here's our subordinating conjunction. The second clause is they ate. But the whole thing, after they ate, right? Doesn't make sense by itself. It does have a subject and it does, ha it does have a verb, but it doesn't make sense by, it's after they ate, it doesn't make sense by itself. Okay, because you helped me, I can leave earlier than planned. Ah, oh, this will give you a little clue right here <laughs> where it is. So can you find the independent clause? The independent clause is I can leave earlier than planned. I can always remove the subordinate clause and it, it leaves a complete sentence. If I take out the independent clause and just leave the subordinate clause because you helped me, it make, doesn't make sense on its own. So because you helped me. So we've got a subject and a verb here, but by itself it doesn't make complete sense. Okay, adverbial clauses. So at, there are different kinds of dependent clauses, but we're just gonna learn about adverbial clauses today. So adverbs modify or describe, do you remember? The verb. Adverbial clauses generally describe a time, location, cause, 
or even condition. And the whole clause serves to modify the verb. So we're used to adverbs being one, you know, I'm really hungry, really is an adverb. It tells me how hungry or how, how hungry I am, right? So, but these are going to be a whole phrase. So if I said, he literally stitched male sacks until his fingers bled, what is the adverbial clause? So, so the question, so the verb is stitched right? What describes, remember an adverb? How, when, where, you know what? So adverbal clauses. Ah, so I've got some time here. How long did he stitch them? Until his fingers bled. I can take the adverbial clause out and it still makes sense. He literally stitched mail sacks. We get more information about how long, how long did he stitch them? So this whole thing is the adverbial clause. Contains an adverb and then some more words that help. So the dependent clause, until his fingers bled, modifies the verb to stitch. It's an adverbial clause of time. So let's take a look at a couple of these. So here are some Latin conjunctions that frequently introduce dependent clauses. So cum is when, so we're gonna, remember it's time, location, cause, or condition. So when clearly tells us and you may actually want to stop the video so that you get, um, uh, I, I will little stop, stop the video, try to fill these out and then come back and do them because it's always better if you try it yourself rather than just have me go through it because then you have to think about what you've just learned. Okay. So pause the video, come back. All right. Cum when that is time. Donek until again, time, just like we saw above. Doom while time because while 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 you're doing it talks about the time frame after yep, time again now because or since it's not time it is not location it's not condition it is cause and then again quote we if because and since is, is cause here we know this is cause and ubi is when or where so the when is time and the where translation is location. And C is if. Ah, oh, that's condition. Remember, it's conditional. If you do this, then I will, you know, if you bring me eggs, I will make you breakfast. So it's condition. My making you breakfast is dependent on if you bring me the eggs. So pretty simple. Um, we are going to have lots of practice on those in class. Make sure you bring your notes with you.